Hello there, everybody, and welcome back to the Mr. Eli Mac channel. I am your host, Mr. Eli Mac, and do I have a new video for you? Yes, it is a fantasy booking video that will deal with possibly bringing back the European Championship. <laughs> Now, I bet you're all wondering, since some of you may not be wrestling fans or fans of the WWE or WWF or AEW, insert wrestling promotion here, what is the European Championship? Well, the European Championship was a championship created by the WWE all the way back in 1997, and it was first held by the British Bulldog, and then... After some time in 2002, it was retired when it was unified with the Intercontinental Championship that was held by Rob Van Dam at the time. So why have I decided to book its return? Well, after looking at everything that is currently happening in WWE and looking at one of the titles that they have that they don't really show anymore, I thought that this would be a great time to bring back the European Championship. And I know they're probably going to bring the European Championship back when NXT Europe fully gets off the ground. But it will probably be just the NXT European Championship as their main event title. The idea of bringing back the European Championship is more of just to fill out a show and make one of their shows feel important when a majority of the people that they have on there are great wrestlers that they don't really showcase on their actual main programming like Raw or SmackDown or NXT. So the entire point of this entire booking video is just me showing what I would do with the European Championship. And again, if you like what you hear with this fantasy booking, hit the like button and subscribe. That way you can see more of this. So. I'm not going to give like a full timeline of it's going to start here, it's going to start on this date, and it's going to end on this date. It's more of just an overall like, hey, this is what I'm going to do with the idea. This is what I would do with the idea. So the main storyline that this is all going to be happening on and the main location that this entire return of the European Championship is going to happen on is WWE's main event, which is sort of their place where they just put people to wrestle where, when they don't have any storyline. So I'm going to be using main event as sort of a place to where they can use the, they can have a big storyline and actually have a title for, to make it feel like a big sort of, or to, to make the show important really, because the show's not really important to the grand scheme of things. So the first main event of this new era is going to start with Adam Pierce walking out and addressing the audience telling them that they are going to be bringing back a former title from the past, a title that will usher in a new era for main event. And they're also going to be retiring the 24-7 championship. That doesn't mean anything really in the grand scheme of things. So they've decided to put together, put together a tournament that will end with this new champion being crowned and Adam Pierce will also say that the championship is going to be the WWE European Championship so they're going to have a eight person tournament to determine who will be the new WWE European Championship and the tournament will and there will be two matches for each event because main event is one hour and they like to have little um, recaps of what happened in prior events on Raw and Smackdown so He's announced that the following people will be the participants in this eight-man tournament. It will be Mustafa Ali, Cedric Alexander, Shelton Benjamin, T-Bar, R-Truth, Akira Tozawa, Reggie, and Veer Mahan. And the reason why it's those eight is because those eight are the main people sort of that circulate on main event. And so the first show that they're going to have is sort of like the first round of those matches, which it will be... The first match is going to be Mustafa Ali versus Akira Tozawa. Two great wrestlers that really deserve a lot of attention. Akira also really needing to get out of the I'm a ninja gimmick because he was so much better when that gimmick was not his. And so they would have a good match like because the matches normally cap out around um, nine minutes. That would sort of be like their capper, and it would have Mustafa Ali advancing on into the tournament to fight the winner of the next match. And the next match would be 
T-Bar versus Veer Mahan. Again, I'm going to be putting T-Bar over in this match in sort of like, a again, another nine-minute match. And the reason why I'm having it be T-Bar is because T-Bar is such a great wrestler, especially when he was Dominic Dijakovic in NXT. And I really think he deserves a very substantial win over Veer Mahan. I don't really know if Veer Mahan has any losses yet in WWE, so I think this would be a good first loss. And also, this could be a great way to push T-Bar forward as a heel for this entire tournament. And that would sort of be the first episode. And we would sort of also, I would start repositioning Main Event as being its own little show where when we get into the next episode, we would have like sort of interview segments with um, Mustafa Ali and T-Bar, have backstage segments with... The other people of the tournament that way we can start pushing forward the story of main event is going to be like sort of a major show afterwards and that's sort of going to be the point going forward from that and so we get into the next episode the second episode of this tournament and again we're going to be having Mustafa Ali having a backstage promo we're going to have him and T-Bar have an interaction backstage but that's going to be the main behind the scenes stuff and the next match the first match of the second episode is going to be Cedric Alexander versus Reggie which if you sort of um know the history between Reggie mainly Reggie being a 24-7 champion the sort of that's been his main stick he's not going to be the one going over Cedric Alexander is going to be the one going over in this match and he's going to be advancing into the tournament and his entire story is going to be wanting to be the European champion after being a very notable um, cruiserweight champion, a WWE cruiserweight champion. And then we move on to the next match, the second match of this tournament and of this event, which is going to be Shelton Benjamin versus R-Truth, who are sort of the two veteran, like the two main vet veterans in this entire tournament, with Shelton Benjamin obviously playing the heel in this match. And it's going to end with Shelton Benjamin getting the upper hand where next week it will be Mustafa Ali versus T-Bar and Cedric Alexander versus Shelton Benjamin. Now, before we get into the Mustafa Ali versus T-Bar match, Mustafa's entire um, thing, his entire storyline is that he doesn't want to be overshadowed by anyone anymore. He wants to be the champion because he, I don't believe... And someone can easily correct me. I don't believe he has held a championship in WWE yet. And so this entire thing would be him trying to be a champion. And him thinking that the European Championship is going to be his way to doing that. And also being able to win the championship is his way to lead an entire show. Even if it's not on the main, on the Raw or SmackDown shows. This is him basically being like, if I win this title, I'm the leader of the of main event. And I'm going to make sure that happens. And so we get into our first match of the evening, which will be Mustafa Ali versus T-Bar. And I would want this match to go sort of 10 minutes, maybe even a little bit longer. Have T-Bar sort of trying to push that he's the stronger man. And again, a majority of these matches have happened so many times already on main event. So it would be all about how to rework the entire um, match to fit the narrative that is trying to be told in hey a title is on the line you need to win this tournament to be a champion and that's how the match would go ultimately in the end I would have Mustafa Ali being the person that would go over and ultimately be the person that would um, win against T-Bar and then next we would have Cedric Alexander and Shelton Benjamin again these two have fought each other one-on-one -on -one before, they have teamed up before, they have won tag team gold before. So they each know each other pretty well. And so the again, the entire point is trying to make it new. Having Shelton Benjamin like play off being a heel a bit more and him trying to be more desperate and trying to get the win. Because for Cedric, he is only he has been the cruiserweight champion before, but um Shelton Benjamin has been U.S. champion, IC champion, tag team champion. Having Shelton Benjamin adding another title to his entire Hall of Fame worthy career, in my opinion. But ultimately, at the end, Cedric Alexander would be the one to get the victory. And we would have the European Championship match be between Mustafa Ali 
and Cedric Alexander, which would be a rematch from their Cruiserweight Championship match from, I want to say, 2017, maybe 2016. I can't remember. It's been a while since I've seen them wrestle against each other. And so we get into the main, um, the next show with the title match, and we would have promos from both Mustafa Ali and Cedric Alexander, both hyping up the match, both telling them, telling the audience why they should win the European Championship match. But before we even get into that match, we're going to have a number one contendership match where the it will be the two losers, basically like third place. <laughs> it's a third place match, but the winner of that will be the next number one contender for the European Championship. That way that can be a story going forward and it would be between T-Bar and Shelton Benjamin with Shelton Benjamin picking up the win over T-Bar using his veteran skills. And again, I believe they have wrestled against each other before, but having Shelton Benjamin using his veteran skills and also maybe some underhanded tactics to get the win, him basically saying that I'm he's going to be the next European champion. And then we get into the match between Mustafa Ali and Cedric Alexander. Mustafa Ali wanting to win a title, wanting to win his first title in WWE, in him wanting to be able to call himself a leader for an entire show, Cedric Alexander wanting to get another championship under his belt and wanting to prove that he is the better man between him and Cedric, or him and Mustafa Ali, because when they've wrestled in the past four titles, it's always been Cedric getting the victory and Cedric wanting to further stamp that, but they're both playing faces in this match. They both respect each other. Even in main event, they have been tag teaming against each other, or tag teaming with each other, so it's sort of like mutual respect between two allies. But ultimately, in the end, I would have Mustafa Ali going over, becoming the new WWE European Champion, with Cedric Alexander raising his hand up and trying to show respect for Mustafa Ali. And then this would lead to a new era of WWE main event where the European Championship is the main goal of all the people that are in it, mainly the main um, men in it. And maybe if you want to, if before you have people in NXT fully going up to Raw or SmackDown, you put them through um, main event, have that be the main, a new sort of feeding system and sure like they can even try to go for the european championship but if you're some, if there's someone from nxc that they don't want to hold the european championship or to stay on main event long just have them be there for like a quick moment have them lose to mustafa ali and then go to raw or smackdown but again, that's just my idea. That's just a fantasy booking scenario for the European Championship. I think the European Championship should come back, um, um, retire fully, like officially retire the 24-7 title and have the European Championship be one of the main titles or the main title on WWE's main event. But that's just my idea. What did you all think of this fantasy booking idea? Did you like it? Did you hate it? Were you indifferent to it? Whatever your thoughts, comment down below. Also, again, if you like this video, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. I'm going to be new, be, be doing more fantasy bookings as the months go on. Also, hit the notification bell. That way you can be notified whenever a new fantasy booking, movie pitch video, or just any new reaction comes your way. Until next time, I've been Mr. Eli Mack. You've been the audience, and I hope you all have a great rest of the day.